Every spoonful of honey is the result of an extraordinary process. Millions of flowers visited, thousands of miles flown, and the coordinated effort of a highly organized society. If you've ever wondered how honey is made, today we'll break down the science behind it, from pollination to mouth-to-mouth -mouth nectar processing to the precise honeycomb storage structure inside the hive. A honeybee colony is made up of three distinct castes. The queen, which is the sole fertile female, which is capable of laying up to 2,000 eggs per day. Worker bees, which are sterile females that perform every task from cleaning and feeding larvae to guarding the hive and foraging for food. And then finally drones, who are males, whose only purpose is to mate with queens from other colonies. Of these, it's the worker bees that create the honey that we enjoy. It all begins in the field, where worker bees collect nectar using long tube-like tongues. The nectar is stored in a special honey stomach, separate from their digestive stomach, so it's kept pure. A single bee may visit over a thousand flowers to fill this reservoir, carrying a load equal to its own body weight. Back at the hive, the forager passes the nectar to another worker, yes, by regurgitation. With each transfer, enzymes from the bee's salivary glands mix in. Invertase breaks down sucrose into simple sugars like glucose and fructose, while glucose oxidase produces hydrogen peroxide and gluconic acid, helping preserve the honey by deterring bacteria and fungi. These changes make the honey easier to digest and gives it its famously long shelf life. The mixture is then placed into hexagonal wax cells of the honeycomb. Workers fan their wings to create airflow, evaporating water from around 70% down to less than 20%. This thick, low moisture syrup is now honey. The bees then seal each cell with a wax cap, locking the honey's freshness for years, even millennia. Nectar isn't their only cargo. Bees also collect pollen, their main source of protein. Their bodies are covered in tiny branched hairs that trap pollen grains, which they brush into pollen baskets on their hind legs. Back at the hive, pollen is mixed with a little nectar or honey to make bee bread a fermented protein-rich food that provides essential nutrients for growing larvae and fuels the colony's daily work. A beehive operates like a single living organism. The queen maintains the population, workers take on specialized roles depending on age, and drones exist solely for reproduction. Communication is remarkably advanced. Through the famous waggle dance, a worker can tell her sisters exactly where to find nectar, using the angle of her body to show the direction relative to the sun and the duration of her waggle to indicate distance. It is one of the most sophisticated examples of symbolic communication outside of the human world. Modern beekeeping can be sustainable when done correctly. Removable frames allow honey to be harvested without harming the bees or destroying the hive. A gentle puff of smoke masks alarm pheromones, keeping the colony calm. The frames are taken to an extractor, which spins out the honey, and the bee wax caps are collected for use in candles, cosmetics, and more. A healthy colony can produce over 50 kilograms of honey a year, far more than it needs for itself, allowing beekeepers to take only the surplus. But poor practices like over-harvesting or replacing honey with low-quality sugar syrups can weaken colonies and make them more vulnerable to disease. Ethical beekeeping means always leaving the bees enough of their own honey to survive. To produce just one pound of honey, bees must visit up to 8 million flowers and fly the equivalent of three times around the earth. Along the way, they pollinate countless plants, ensuring food security for humans and maintaining biodiversity in ecosystems worldwide. Honey is far more than a sweetener, it's the product of a complex and ancient relationship between plants, pollinators, and people. It stands as a testament to the intricate systems that sustain life on Earth and to the profound impact even the smallest creatures can have on the natural world. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Forevergreen. Thanks for watching.